is we're going to actually use these formulas to try and come up with a solution to some problems. So this first problem says determine the sum of the first 14 terms of this particular series. Okay, so we're going to write out our formula. S of n equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. Okay, so it says we're going to find the sum of the first 14 terms. Well, that means n is 14. That's the number of terms that we have. A is our first term. Well, our first term in this particular series is 9 plus 14 minus 1 because n is 14 in this question. And our common difference, how did we get from 9 to 15, from 15 to 21? Well, in this case, we're adding 6 each time, so our common difference is 6. So if we start working this out, s of 14 is going to be 14 over 2, which is 7, times 2 times 9 is 18, plus 13 times 6. Hmm. 13 times 6 gives us 78. So now we can find the sum of the 14 terms just by typing in this whole expression into our calculator. We can go 7 times in brackets, 18 plus 78, close the brackets, tells us the sum of those 14 terms is 672. Now, the next question says, determine the sum of 22 terms of an arithmetic sequence, where the first term is negative 18 and the last term is 45. So we're going to use our second formula, the formula that we can use where we know the first term, we know the last term. So they want us to find the sum of the first 22 terms. So n is 22, the first term is negative 18, the last term is 45, and we're going to divide by 2. Now, some of you are going to want to try to type this all in at once in your calculator. I'm going to suggest you don't do that. I'm going to suggest we do the top row first. We go 22 times, in brackets, negative 18 plus 45, and we hit enter. That gives us 594. So now we're going to take 594 and we're going to divide it by 2, and it's going to tell us the sum of the first 22 terms is 297. <clears throat> the next question asks us to find the sum of the terms in this following sequence. So most people say, okay, well, let's write out our formula. S of n equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And as soon as they write out that formula, they go, well, hold on a minute. I need to know the number of terms in this particular series to be able to find its sum. So we have to go back and we have to learn something we learned used in arithmetic sequences. We learned in arithmetic sequences that you can use your T of n formula to find out the number of terms in a particular sequence. So t of n is the last term in the sequence, and in this case, it's negative 38. The first term is 17, and we're going to solve for n. The common difference here, if you look, you're subtracting 5 each time. So the common difference is negative 5. So if we start solving this, if we distribute the negative 5, we get negative 5n plus 5. We get negative 38 equals 17 plus 5 is 22 minus 5n. So we need to subtract 22 from each side. Well, if we subtract 22 from each side, we're going to end up with negative 60 equals negative 5n. And when you divide each side by negative 5, you're going to find out that the number of terms in this particular sequence is 12. So that means we now know we're going to find the sum of the first 12 terms. So we start substituting in our values for our a, our n, and our d. Don't forget that the common difference here is negative 5. That's going to make a huge difference when you find your sum. If you put a positive 5 in here, you're going to get a really wacko answer. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 17 times 2 is 34 plus 11 times negative 5. So, 
if I work this out on my calculator, I'm going to go 6 times 34 minus 55. I'm going to get a negative 126 as the sum of these values. Is it possible to get a negative sum? Absolutely it's possible to get a negative sum because if you have negative values in your particular sequence or series, when you add those values together you're going to get a negative solution. So don't think you're wrong if you get a negative answer here. Now the first three examples we did here were all just theoretical. They were just numbers. Mumbo jumbo we just threw down like so who might use some of a series? Well, we're going to look at one situation here that might help you out. It says Peter starts work at a salary of $16,000 per annum. Per annum is the same thing as saying per year. He receives an annual increase of $850. He works for the fir firm for 12 years. So it first of all wants us to find the salary in the 12th year. So it wants us to find our T of 12, our T of N. Remember that's A plus N minus 1 times D. So A, the first year, he makes $16,000. The common difference is positive 850 because he gets an $850 increase each year. So if we now take out our calculator and we calculate this, we get 16,000 plus 11 times 850 tells us he makes $25,350 in his 12th year working for this particular company. Now it says they want to know the total amount he makes in 12 years. So they want to know S of 12 in this case. And we know the first term, which is 16,000, and we know the last term, which is 25 or 1,350. So we're going to use our n times a plus t of n over 2. So that's going to be 12 times the first term, which is 16,000, plus the last term, which is 25,350, divided by 2. So if we go ahead and calculate that out, 12 times... 16,000 plus 25,350 divided by 2 tells us that this particular fella makes $248,100 in the first 12 years that he works for this company. So, there's some examples of how to do arith the sum of an arithmetic series. Remember, the first example is where you know the number of terms, but you don't know the last term. So we use our first formula. If you know the first and the last term, you can use this second formula. And if you don't know the number of terms, you're going to have to find the number of terms first before you go ahead and find the sum. When you're doing your uh, working on your assignment, it's good to look back at these examples to help you out in case you've forgotten how to find the particular sum.